Verehrter Herr Bundespräsident, Herr Bundesminister, Herr Stadtrat, Honorable Minister and Graduate of the Diplomatic Academy, Sergio Amorim, Excellencies, dear graduates and students of the day, ladies and gentlemen. The 50th anniversary of the refounding as Diplomatic Academy by then Foreign Minister Bruno Kreisky in 1964 and 260 years since the foundation of the Oriental Academy by Maria Theresia in 1754. Of course, as you can imagine, this coincidence that it should be me, a graduate of the Diplomatic Academy, to serve as director at this particular time gives me great personal pleasure and makes me very proud. This is a great day for the faculty, staff, graduates, and students of the DA, and we feel proud and honored that the Austrian head of state agreed to honor this event with his presence. Thank you, sir, Herr Bundespräsident. The initiative to create a new institution which would prepare young people for careers in international affairs came from Bruno Kreisky. The DA owes him this initiative its existence and we pay tribute today. But there were, of course, many people who took up the idea and helped to carry it through and we are grateful to all those who have helped to set up the institution over the years made it to what it is today. The DA owes very much to its first director, Ernst Florian Winter, who for Bruno Kreisky was the ideal choice to be in charge of constructing a new institution and to lead it to international excellence. I would also like to pay tribute to the 10 directors from Ambassador Corrett to Ambassador Kruja, who followed Ernst Florian and Minter. Each of them contributed significantly. Since 1991, mostly with funds from the uh, Austrian Development Agency, we are holding executive training courses for diplomats and civil servants from developing countries, in particular from uh, neighboring regions such as the Western Balkans. We have held more than 80 such courses for more than 1,000 participants. And one of these training courses, and allow me to mention this because we are very proud of it, relates to the Middle East. During three weeks, 16 students from Israel, Palestine, and Jordan are having lectures and courses at the DA ranging from human rights to energy policy. <laughs> Mr. President, Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at the end, I want to wish our beloved day a very happy birthday, many happy returns, and a multissimus annos. Thank you very much. Mr. Federal President, uh, dear Ministers, uh, Excellencies, uh, Mr. Director, and especially um, all the students uh, and alumni uh, who are with us uh, tonight, let me first of all extend a warm welcome to all of you. Uh, the city of Vienna, as you might know, is uh, not only host to the uh, Diplomatic Academy, but also to some 200,000 students uh, in the city, studying and being enrolled in over 20 universities and uh, applied schools higher schools, um, so uh, more than 10% of the Viennese population are enrolled in universities. Um, and uh, this makes Vienna not only a hub, an international hub of, uh, of students, but it makes it uh, the largest university town, at least in the German-speaking countries, uh, including Berlin. Maria Theresia understood that there is a necessity for well-trained
diplomats and officers and civil servants. And so this uh, Oriental Academy was founded. One of the main reasons was to teach the languages which were spoken southeast of Austria. Then the name was changed and then a long history was taking place. And finally, I think it was 1941 or 42, the Consular Academy was closed during World War II and during the Nazi system. And there we are again, that it was Bruno Kreisky, who was altogether 25 years in government, six years as a Secretary of State from 1953 to 1959, then Foreign Minister for five years, 59 to 64, and then Prime Minister 13 years, from 1970 to 1983. And he had this idea to reanimate or reestablish uh, the Consular Academy as a diplomatic academy. And he had some new ideas and new principles, as you, as you, Director Winkler, has described already and has mentioned already. Um, in his uh, speech, where we heard just a few words, he was, so to say, uh, praising and elaborating some of his, if I may say so, hobbies in politics, saying a diplomat must also understand political system. A diplomat must know a lot about economy. Uh, a diplomat must be able for excellent communication, not only with other diplomats, but also with the media and with the press. Uh, another figure which was not yet mentioned that uh, in, the, in the 50 years since 1964, uh, students from more than 100 countries were studying, 102 or 103 countries were studying in the Diplomatic Academy. And so in several aspects, the Diplomatic Academy did pioneering work and is a pioneer for teaching, for learning, and for diplomatic activities. That's what I wanted to say. That's what is for me a good reason to congratulate you, and that's a good reason to say all the best for the future, and thank you very much. Thanks as well to the teachers as to the students. All the best. The year 2014 is an impressive year with regard to commemorating both positive and also tragic historic events. 100 years since the beginning of the First World War, 75 years since the beginning of the Second World War, 25 years since the fall of the Iron Curtain and 10 years since the EU enlargement of Central and Eastern Europe. And as the President say, said today, the list of the positive events we celebrate this year will become a little longer as we are celebrating 260 years since the establishment of the Diplomatic Academy of Vienna. The age of diplomacy is by far not over and probably will never be. I am sure that the knowledge and skills that can be acquired at the Academy will help to avoid escalations or military interventions in the future. And I'm also sure that the diplomatic agenda has become broader and more difficult and that we are all in need of new ideas, concepts and initiatives. Therefore, the Diplomatic Academy has, this, has an essential role and task to fulfill. And I think today I'm convinced that 100% of the applause will be for Hans Winkler and his team who are doing a great job at the Diplomatic Academy at least for another 260 years. All the best for the future.
So it's a great pleasure for me to be here. And I think probably the reason that I was invited here is to show to the young students that you may become ministers or foreign ministers, defense ministers even, and uh, maybe even, who knows, presidents or prime ministers. So I think that's what the kind of formation that you receive in the Diplomatic Academy. So it was really a little bit uh, a microcosm of all the world. So my real diplomatic life started here. But in any case, I have, uh, uh, I think my first lessons came from here. And these lessons were uh, respect for diversity, this vision of a multilateral world, uh, which to some extent may date back to the Congress of Vienna. Of course, the Congress of Vienna in some respects was conservative because it was trying to restore order in Europe, but in some respects was very progressive as well because it was trying to do that by consensus of the rulers of the day. And that's really what most of all I learned here. I learned also the solidarity. I learned that you can reconcile a very precise uh, scientific knowledge even of politics, although politics is not very much subject to very precise analysis, but you can reconcile that with a humanistic view. And if, so, if there is someone whom I think uh, was precisely uh, uh, an incarnation in a 20th century fashion of this humanistic uh, uh, ideal was Professor Winter, Ernst Florian Winter, uh, whom, whose death I also mourned. I would say that uh, two or three things, if I could, and especially to the young people. Please, we are in a very difficult times nowadays, but don't lose faith that the world will be better. It will be better. It, of course, to a large extent, it will depend on you, on what you can do. So I will say, in a way, paraphrasing uh, an important, well, like, I know him as a, as a German poet. I don't know if he's an Austrian after all, but anyway, Hoderlin. Hodelin used to say that one should be very careful not to allow precocious maturity to blur your enthusiasm. Keep your enthusiasm because this is the most difficult thing to do. People will, tell, will come and tell you, well, you have to be sensible. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do the contrary. Go on. Fight for your ideals because that's, that's, why, that's why I believe the world can be saved. Finally, if you ever become a defense minister, I'll tell you what I told my former president when I was invited to become uh, a defense minister. He said, well, Celso, how is, it, how is it going now in the defense ministry? You have been foreign minister for so long. I said, well, in the foreign ministry, I could be a warrior. In the defense ministry, I have to be a diplomat. Thank you very much. <laughs>